。咁成长同其他能量有冇啲咩嘅关系呢？好嚟到二零二二年 Paper One B 嘅第一条题目啦，以下呢 A、B、C、D、E 呢，分别系一啲人类维持生命嘅活动嚟嘅，分别系排遗啦、排泄、摄食、生长同埋呼吸作用嘅。呢啲就问我哋啦，利用返英文字母组成以下呢一条方程式啦，显示返呢五个人类维持生命嘅活动喺个能量流当中嘅关系嘅。今次系讲能量嘅流动啦。咁啊，呢条题目呢，就先考下我哋对于呢五个人类维持生命嘅活动嘅定义嘅理解啦。排胃作用就係去排走一啲消化唔到嘅嘢食啦，排泄作用就係排走一啲新陈代谢嘅废物啦，摄食啦就係食嘢啦，佢係一个能量输入嘅过程嚟嘅。到生长呢，就係一隻生物佢个体型增加同埋複雜程度增加嘅一个过程啦。而喺呢個生長嘅過程當中咧，能量係會儲存喺個身體入面，作為生物量或者生物質量嘅。而去到最後咧，就係、是、呼吸作用啦，就係、是、透過拆解翻食物，去將食物入面儲存住嘅能量釋放出嚟嘅。然後啦，呢、这個題目咧去考我哋嘅就係有關於新陳代謝嘅概念啦，當中啦有分解代謝同埋有合成代謝嘅。分解代謝藍色咧就係正正就係下面呢一個啦，就係、是、呼吸作用啦，例如啦將啲嘢食拆解釋放能量，分解代謝嘅過程啦。而合成代謝產色呢一個咧，成長就係其中一個例子啦。將我哋食咗翻嚟嘅嘢食，例如蛋白質啦、碳水化合物啦，點樣用喺個身體入面呢？尤其是啦，將蛋白質消化成為氨基酸，我哋再將啲氨基酸再去組合成為我哋想要嘅蛋白質，例如我哋嘅細胞膜啦、我哋嘅肌肉啦、同埋酶啦，諸如此類啦。然後呢條題目咧就考翻我哋有關於能量嘅輸入啦、能量嘅流失啦。同埋啦，用能量储存起上嚟，去建立我哋自己嘅生物量嘅。咁所以呢条题目呢，起手嘅第一个就係成长，因为啦，佢就係剩低嘅能量嚟嘅。咁成长同其他能量有冇啲咩嘅关系呢？分别啦，就係能一二三四。首先啦，就係能量嘅摄入，因为你透过摄食获得能量，获得嘢食。而过程当中啦。有一啲嘢食你消化唔到，你会屙走咗去，呢个系能量嘅流失啦，就系、是、粉红色嘅能量流失啦。第二啦，就系、是、一啲新陈代谢嘅废物，其实你都系排走咗佢嘅。例如啦，过多嘅氨基酸你唔会储存起上嚟嘅，你会将佢拆解咗成为尿素，咁尿素啦你都会排走嘅。咁其实最当初氨基酸都应该系能量或者去建立你身体一部分嘅一啲组成物质嚟噶嘛，但系你用唔到、啊。咁就係排走咗啦，能量流失咯。然后去到 E 呢，就係分解代謝啦。其实佢都係能量流失嚟㗎，因为啲嘢食啦，当你拆解咗、释放咗出嚟，当然啦，一部分会变成 ATP 啦，身体唔同嘅部分都会用得到啦。例如肌肉嘅收缩啦，而喺呼吸作用呢，其实佢都会产生熱能啊嘛。而熱能呢，其实都係一个能量嘅流失嚟嘅。咁所以答案呢就会 D 等于 C 减 A B E 入。有好 Papi 你就问啦，就住各个活动嘅能量值而言啦，解释返点解一个素食者 vegetarian 佢嘅 D C 比例 D 呢就係生长，除摄食 D 除 C 嘅一个比例呢係较一个非素食者为之低嘅。呢、这个题目啦，最紧要嘅就係知道返究竟 D 除 C 係乜嘢意思呢？就係、是、用成长嘅能量值。去除返摄食嘅能量值啦，例如啦，成长嘅能量值係九十 K 焦，摄食返嚟嘅能量值係一百 K 焦，咁 D 除 C 就係零点九啦。嗱，佢呢个概念呢，大家係要知道嘅。咁有一样嘢呢，大家要留意嘅，就係、是、成长嘅能量值一定係比摄食嘅能量值为之低嘅。咁啊，因为啦，係 D 等于 C 减后面呢一抽嘢啊嘛。所以 D 一定係細過 C 嘅，然後啦，我哋就學下計數咯喎，我哋先去假設啦，素食者嘅能量攝入同埋非素食者嘅能量攝入呢係一樣嘅，都係一百 K 做。而喺素食者嘅成長呢，原來佢個能量就只係值五十 K 做啫，咁即係 D 除 C 呢就係零點五啦，五十除一百啊嘛，係咪？而對於非素食者嘅成長嘅能量值呢，就係九十 K 做，即係 D 除 C 呢就係零點九啦。而当我哋知道呢个数字之后呢，我哋就去到下一个最紧要嘅概念喎，就係食用纤维係消化唔到㗎嘛。呢、这个概念呢，大家中三一定学过㗎啦。然后啦，就睇返思考英价喎，点样将我哋学识嘅概念表达返出嚟呢？
。第一啦，就係要知道返素食者嘅飲食特徵，就係有好多嘅食用纖維啦。即係咁有咗呢一句，唔係大晒喎，記緊返啦。最緊要嘅就係食用纖維，當我哋攝食咗之後，佢最終嘅命運係如何呢？然後到第三啦，就再解釋返佢對於一個 D 除 C 呢一個比例嘅影響係乜嘢啦。咁所以一開始啦，你就講返啦，素食者食嘅就係好多食用纖維啦。而呢啲食用纖維呢，係消化唔到嘅，咁消化唔到就吸收唔到，吸收唔到就會經過糞便排胃出嚟啦。所以啲字眼大家要好清晰 ，cannot be digest，cannot be absorbed， 同埋 will be ingest， 唔係 excrete 喎。所以啦，原來一個素食者呢，哪怕佢食咗好多能量返嚟，但係佢消化唔到、吸收唔到，就經過糞便呢，有大量嘅能量流失啦。相比起一個非素食者，知道呢，佢有一個低一啲嘅 D 除 C 嘅比例啦。嗱，呢一句呢，題目俾你嘅，因為講到明㗎嘛，素食者嘅 D 除 C 比例係比起非素食者為之低㗎嘛。後屘呢一句包返個底壓線嘅啫。題目啦，做咩變奏呢？就係、是、D 除 C 嘅比例。叫你解釋下點解都係低過一嘅呢？咁其實頭先我約略解釋過啦，你試下用你嘅文字表達一次。好，跟住啦就去到一點出發啦。今次嘅題目呢，就由生命活動開始啦，當中呢，考嘅概念呢，就由新陳代謝啦，同埋能量啦，新陳代謝啦，分解代謝合成代謝啦，例如啦呼吸作用啦、脱氨作用啦，都係一個分解代謝嘅例子啦。释放出嚟嘅就系二氧化碳同埋尿素，都系一啲衰嘅嘢嚟嘅，所以啦，作为新陈代谢废物，我哋就要排泄，排走咗佢啦。透过呼气啦，透过屙尿啦，就排走咗二氧化碳同埋尿素啦。跟住啦，就去到合成代谢啦，例如啦，蛋白质嘅组成啦，同埋細胞分裂。你话咦，細胞分裂两常唔系一开二咩？嗱，你记得喎，喺細胞分裂之前，个細胞系咪就要去复制啲 DNA 啦？複製啲蛋白質啦，複製啲細胞器啦，其實都係一個合成代謝嘅概念嚟嘅。而啦，去到能量啦，就講能量嘅流動啦，亦都講能量嘅流失啦。咁當中啦，拉返另一個概念呢，就係、是、經過食物鏈講返生態系統咯。而當中啦，亦都有唔少嘅長題或者 M C 都考過大家啦，數量追睇啦，生物量追睇啦，其實就係考大家，你明明食咗咁多嘢，但係點解淨係得部分嘅能量係喺你嘅身體成為生物質量，而再傳俾下一隻生物呢 o two two paper one B question one is about the life processes in humans: ejection, excretion, feedings, growth and respiration. And for part A. We need to use the letters to construct an equation showing the relationship of these processes in the energy flow. So we have the formula here. And then for the first part of this concept, we need to check is about the definition of those life processes. So you can see here, ejection, removal of the undigested food, excretion, removal of the metabolic waste, feeding, the intake of food, which is the energy intake. Growth is the process by which organisms increase in size and complexity, and in this process, energy is stored as the biomass. And for the respiration, is the breakdown of the food to release the stored energy in the food. So after we recall the definitions, we need to recall the concept of the metabolism. So we have the catabolism in blue color, for example, respiration, and the anabolism in the orange color, for example, growth. And after this part, we need to recall the concept of the energy input, energy loss, and the energy used to build the biomass. So we have the green color, energy input, feeding, energy loss. Ejection, excretion, also for respiration, because for respiration there will be ATP and thermal energy produced, and for the thermal energy will be lose in the form of heat loss. So that's why the thermal energy produced by the respiration can be regarded as the energy loss as well, and for the energy we used, we stored in our body, which is the biomass. So when we construct the whole equation, we have growth, and then growth is equal to feeding the energy intake minus all the energy loss or the energy you cannot use. For example, the undigested food, the dietary fiber, you cannot digest, you cannot absorb, and then you will ingest it in the feces. And for the metabolic waste, for example, the amino acid, you cannot store the excess amino acid. We do the deamination for the excess amino acid and produce urea, which will be removed in the urine.
and for respiration, as what I mentioned, the thermal energy can be regarded as the energy loss as well. So we have this equation. And then for part B, in terms of the energy value of each process, explain why the D over C ratio for vegetarian is lower than that for the non-vegetarians. So for this question, the critical concept is that we need to realize the meaning of D over C ratio. What does it mean? So I give you an example. D over C, it means growth over feeding ratio. Growth, there is 90 kJ, feedings 100 kJ, and the D over C ratio is 0 0.9. And then let's have a simple equation. Let the energy intake by feeding is the same for the vegetarians and the non-vegetarians. So for the growth of the vegetarian, let's say the energy is 50 kJ, so the D over C ratio is 0 0.5. And for the growth of the non-vegetarians is 90 kJ, so for the D over Z ratio is 0 0.9. Before we move on, one thing I would like to tell you is that the energy value of growth, it must be smaller than the energy value of feedings. Because according to this equation, growth is equal to C minus ABE. So how come we can get a larger energy value uh, after C minus several energy values, right? So D must be smaller than C. So we have this concept. And the second critical concept is about the dietary fiber, which is undigestible. That's something we learned in Form 3 level. And then let's take a look at the scaffolding. First part, we need to recall the features of the vegetarian diet, which is rich in dietary fiber. Secondly, we need to recall the fate of the dietary fiber after feeding. Can you digest it? If you cannot or you can digest it, can you absorb it? Step 3, we need to recall the reason for the impact on the D over C ratio. It's mentioned that the D over C ratio for the vegetarian is lower than that for the non-vegetarian. So let's take a look at the whole answer. First of all, we need to talk about that vegetarian feed on plant material, which is rich in dietary fiber. And for the dietary fiber, it is undigestible. And for the undigestible material, cannot be absorbed, and they will be digest as feces. So we call that you need to use digest rather than excrete. The definition you can refer here. And as a result, vegetarians have a greater energy loss through feces and than the non-vegetarian. So for this part, uh, I can say that that is um say. Um, say. So as a result, vegetarians have a greater energy loss through the feces. So uh, the answer, the model answer, it says excretion, but I insist that it should be ejection. So any possible question variation, we need to explain why the D over C ratio is always lower than 1. So the idea, you need to recall that the energy of the growth, energy value of the feeding. So tell me what is going on. So let's take a look at the curriculum mapping. This question starts from the life processes and then it tells you the concept about the metabolism and the energy. So for the metabolism, it consists of catabolism and the anabolism. For the catabolism, we have the example respiration and the deamination. And for respiration, it produces carbon dioxide and for deamination, it produces urea. And both of them, they are something toxic. We do not need them. So they are the metabolic waste and to be excreted by breathing out, we breathe out the carbon dioxide or by urination and then we remove the urea. And for the anabolism, we have the example protein synthesis and the cell division. You may think that, oh, Mr. Learn, for cell division, we are making new cells 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4. Whoa. Seems like breaking down something. No, no, no. Before the cell undergoes cell division, it will do the protein synthesis, making new organelles. All of them, they are the examples of the anabolism. And for the energy, we talk about the energy flow and the energy loss, and then we link it to the concept of the food chain. Finally, we can talk about the ecosystem. So that's why we can refer to the MC or long question before about the number pyramid or the biomass pyramid.